A couple of weeks ago, I showed off this, the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, an ESP32 based smart speaker that if set up to use Whisper and Piper, handles voice commands and home automation fully locally through Home Assistant. It's amazing, but the one thing that it's missing is a proper conversation agent. Sure, Asking it to turn your lights on and set timers is useful, but being able to ask it questions and get answers would be really nice. That is where Olama comes in. Olama is an open source way to run large language models locally, and it turns out it's ridiculously easy to set up and connect to Home Assistant Voice, so let me walk you through it and then demo just how useful it is. First things first. You will need Olama set up and running, and you will need a reasonably powerful PC for this, ideally with a graphics card with lots of VRAM, although it can run just on the CPU relatively quickly, so long as you have enough system RAM too. In my case, I already have two home servers running already, one for work and one for personal use, so I'll set it up on my personal NAS, which is running the latest stable build of true NAS scale. And that latest stable build part is actually really important. Only in the last few months has true NAS finally migrated to using Docker containers as their apps manager. That means installing Olama is as easy as clicking install in the app store, setting up any parameters you might want, like letting it use existing storage pools if you'd prefer, and setting up how many CPU cores to allow it to use, as well as how much RAM, and if you can pass a GPU into it, then that too. And they're just hitting save. That's pretty much it ready to go. You can open the container shell and try and set up the various models and you know, try them out right in the command line, and this does actually give you a bit better control too, although we'll come back to that in a second, but you can also just leave it alone and head to Home Assistant. You want to head to the Devices and Integrations page and add the Olama integration. Put in the IP address of the Olama server and the correct port, and then it will ask you what model you want to use. Here, you can take your pick, although this is where the command line interface might actually be beneficial. If you don't have much RAM, like my server did when I first set this up, I've since doubled to 32 gig, which still isn't that much for a ZFS server, but either way, you might find that you need to run the smaller versions of the models wherever possible. These models all generally come with differing parameter counts. The more parameters, generally the better the response is, but the harder they are to run, and certainly the more memory it takes to run them too. From Home Assistant, there doesn't seem to be a way to install a particular parameter size version of a listed model. It will just download the default, which is often the largest one. If you need to pick a smaller one, you might need to use the command line interface anyway, which you can then run a llama run model name colon parameter size. So as an example, Olama run deepseek r one colon 1.5b, or if you just want to download the model but not run it, swap run for pull. Once you've pulled the models you want, or just pick the default in Home Assistant, saving that will create an entity for the model in Home Assistant. You can create as many of these entities as you want and try and swap them out, see how the, the responses work. But once you've got that, to be able to use the model with voice, head to voice assistants, click on local assistant, and then change the conversation agent to the Alama model you want to use. In the settings for that, you can change the instruction given to the model, along with the context window size, max message history, and the keep alive type. Personally, I would recommend changing that from minus one, which means permanently keep the model alive, to something reasonable like a few minutes, so it doesn't end up sprawling all over your system's RAM permanently. There is also a setting to let the LLM control Home Assistant, although you will find that it's best to leave that set to no control, 
partially because a bunch of models don't support tools, a required feature for the control to work, and partially because of the setting in the main menu there, prefer handling commands locally. This means that commands like turn on lights are handled by Home Assistant or the Home Assistant agents, while questions that it doesn't know the answer to are passed off to the LLM. That means those commands are run faster and more efficiently, and it keeps the compatibility problem at bay too. So now with that set up, we've successfully connected Home Assistant Voice to a locally run large language model. It's remarkably simple and works pretty well. Okay, Nabu, how long is an inch in centimeters? One inch is approximately equal to 2.54 centimeters. There you go. Now responses do take a bit longer than the built-in conversation agent because it's now doing speech to text, generating a response from the LLM, and then text to speech to voice the answer. But considering this is all running locally, I'm pretty happy with that. The one thing that you'll want to try out and consider is which model to use. While DeepSeek R1 is the new hotness, the R in the name may as well stand for reasoning because the responses it gives contain an awful lot of text for a relatively simple question. Asking it what you know an inch in centimeters is spits out two large paragraphs of thinking followed by a single sentence answer. If you could maybe filter out everything in the think tags, that might work, but for me, I just opted to use Llama 3.2 instead. That seems to work pretty well. The only other thing that I'd like to add to this is the ability to search the web. Although that doesn't seem like the most simple of additions, so I'll have to put that one on hold for the time being. In short then, setting up a Llama and Home Assistant voice is remarkably easy, and the results, while a little on the slow side, are great. Let me know in the comments if you set this up and how you get on with it and which model you end up choosing as well. So yeah, that's how to set it up. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, including the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition review. That'll be in the cards, uh, on the end cards and in the cards above. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. If you want to check out my own open source hardware, the open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool, those are available at osrtt.com, linked in the description. Otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.